Um, uh, I'll tell you what I, wh what I thought of it, Piers. I think our country has had enough of people like your guest last night. It's not just that he's in the NHS. Why is he in Britain? Why do we allow people in Britain to try to overthrow the state who praise terrorism, members of extremist organizations? What, what has Britain got from this guy exactly? What benefit have we got from him? I mean, I wouldn't want to be an NHS patient going to him. I don't know if any Jews would particularly want to in Britain. I don't know if very many innocent people would want to go to this doctor. But my question is not, is not just should he be able to practice. I want to know why our country of Britain has been such a soft touch for decades that we have Hamas leaders, terrorist spokespeople, Islamist sympathisers like your guest, Mr Al-Andalusi, and now NHS doctors who are members of, of, of groups like Hizbut Tahir that stand on the streets of London, call for jihad, call for Muslim armies to arise. I don't think our country benefits anything from these people. I think people like that should leave. We have no need of them. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video titled lies but don't expect not to be challenged douglas murray confront pro-palestinian on the topic should jihad be suspended i believe this is going to be an interesting one let's check it out go dr abdul wahid is leader of a, con a controversial islamist movement which glorified the hamas attacks and chanted for jihad on the streets of london astonishingly he's also an acting, serving, long-serving, actually, NHS GP. And last night, he came on my show, accepted an invitation to be interviewed after he was uh, in the newspapers for his uh, thoughts about what happened on October the 7th. And while that interview caused last night a bit of a stir, do you think Hamas are a terror group? I believe it's a resistance organisation. Okay. Do you think what they did on October the 7th was a terror attack? I believe that if civilians got killed on that day, it, if. it is... It is if, appalling. If. It is appalling. You're a doctor, man. It is appalling. You're a doctor in I the also NHS. Believe, what do you I mean also if? Believe 1,200 people got massacred. Well, very clearly, Dr Wahid cast doubt on whether he, the atrocities on October 7th even took place. Uh, also clearly, he questioned whether any civilians had been massacred. He believes the Hamas attacks were an act of resistance and the people who did it are not terrorists, but they're fighting a resistance. I don't think they were. 1,200 innocent people were killed that day, women were raped, babies and the elderly were kidnapped. Some people were beheaded. It was a medieval orgy of indiscriminate violence. And we know that in no small part because Hamas filmed their attacks and gleefully celebrated them in videos they posted to the world. And Hamas has since publicly warned that it will not hesitate to repeat the attacks again. Israel أمنية وعسكرية وسياسية للأمة العربية والإسلامية يجب أن تنتهي لذلك إحنا لا نخجل من نقول ذلك بكل قوة نصير لازم نقدمها وحنقدمها مرة ثانية وثالثة. Whatever your view of this war, and I've tried to platform a lot of people on both sides of it repeatedly so we can get a sense of what both sides are thinking. Denying that the massacre of October the 7th even happened cannot be the basis for any sensible discussion. I have deep sympathy with the decades-long plight of the Palestinian people, which I've expressed many times. I've repeatedly called out Israel's occupation of both Gaza and the West Bank. I have deep unease about the scale of Israel's response to the Hamas attack, unease that's now shared by the President of the United States. But to deny that it was a terror attack at all is, quite frankly, poisonous delusion. And I think it's entirely valid to question whether this man's views are compatible with being an NHS doctor in a publicly funded health service. I'm not calling for him to be fired or cancelled, as some have said today. I gave him a platform on this show, called Uncensored, to elaborate on his opinions. But I found a lot of his answers deeply concerning. And I do believe many members of the public, not least his own patients, might also share my unease about the opinions he so willingly offered, just as they were about cries of jihad on the streets of London. There's been a backlash from some Muslim followers of myself on Twitter, mostly because I suggested Dr. Wahid wants women to be oppressed. Would you like Sharia law. law in this country? Last time I'm going well, to ask if you. If Sharia law... If Sharia just law... Yes or no. If Sharia law 
means upholding family values, mm. means looking after the poor. Means no gays, M no feminists, i.e. women who get above well, themselves, that's your right? That's caricature. No, that's your oh, I know what Sharia so, law so wants why for women. Do so, why do so many women become Muslim these days? Mm. Why do so they want many to be women oppressed? in the West? Is that what you're going to tell me? No. Well, I said that in the specific context of Dr Wahid's desire for Sharia law in this country and his defence of a tweet from one of the members of his own organisation calling feminists and gay people filth. It's important to understand that context. I don't suggest for a moment that women who want to convert to Islam uh, should do so for any other than perfectly good reasons. I have no problem with Islam as a religion or with Muslims. I have a problem, though, with people who endorse and support terrorism or who are blatantly homophobic or who are blatantly misogynist. Now, many people have since accused me of being, as I say, anti-Muslim, but I'm not. No one who watches this show could possibly reach that conclusion. Let me be crystal clear again. I'm anti-terrorists and I'm anti those who support terrorists. Well, joining me now from Tel Aviv is Douglas Murray, the associate editor of The Spectator, the co-founder of the Muslim Debate Initiative, Abdullah al-Andalusi, and Dr. Isaldine Abulayesh, uh, the Canadian-Palestinian medical doctor, who's joined me again in the studio. And great to see you. Thank you very much Thank indeed you. for joining me. Let me start with you, if I may, uh, Dr. Abulayesh. Um, when you saw that interview, what was your response to the fact that it's an NHS doctor working and living in this country who was saying those things? It's important. I am coming, you know. I heard it. I heard many of your interviews. Jihad, the word jihad. My presence here is jihad. When I'm coming to meet with you to advocate for my Palestinian people and for saving lives of the people is jihad. And this is the highest level of jihad. The resistance against someone who is invading you, this is the lowest level of jihad. But jihad, when I'm traveling, when I am going to any place, even someone who is dying because of far away from his home is a kind of jihad. When we are fasting, when we are walking, walk is a jihad. And that's the most important. We need to understand it, not to take it out of the context in the limited understanding of it. When I am invaded with a disease, COVID, what do I do? I have to resist the COVID. And that's when we face cancer disease, any cancer. With respect, disease... you, you would not categorise October the 7th as a resistance. It's, you know, I condemned the killing of any innocent human being. And for me, I was born. My daughters were killed before October 7th. Yes, I know. I was born as a Palestinian refugee before October 7th. My parents were refugees before 48. Yes. They were born in Palestine. So the history didn't start. The world is not created October 7th. That's what we need. And we are today. But I don't will, think we, it's, it's important. But let me, let me, with, let me, let me continue. Respect, I don't think let me continue. Anyone, anyone but let me disputes. continue, please. All right. Today is the 12th of December. Today is the 12th of December where we have mm -hmm. more than 23 Palestinians thousand are killed more than 45,000 are severely wounded even the damage in the Gaza Strip as Borel mm. the representative of foreign affairs in the European Union it's far beyond the damage in Germany for six years in two months more than that so even you know well, how that's many... not true actually they, why no 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 there's, there was far he, he, they, he said it who said that Borel the representative of the European Union, the Foreign Affairs. Yeah, but there are far more people died in World War II than have died. No, no, in the war. damage, the damage, the, the structural damage, damage, the destruction. Well, there certainly would have been more damage in Germany in World War II. He he mentioned that himself. But well, that that won't be factually accurate. But my, here's my question though for you: It all comes back to me. I'm I'm very happy to platform anybody on this show, right to the point where they try and convince me that what happened on October the seventh was not an act of terror. And when people refuse to concede that point, I, I find it very hard then to have a civilised discussion. That's why I got so annoyed last night. Well, okay. well can we... So, if I, so if would I, you if consider the killing of my I... daughters as terrorist? Well, I think it was appalling. Yeah. And I think... You, what, do you, you consider your... it as terrorist? I, I do not consider Israel well, to be a terrorist organisation. What? Well, the killing of my daughters? Right. I think here's a question we have to ask ourselves, which is, um, since you have uh, defended um, uh, Israel's 
operation in Gaza as self-defence. Um, no, no, and no, since no, you have... Don't misquote me. Don't misquote me. I've have defended... You, did, so you don't say it's part of their self-defence? No, then? let me clarify. OK. I've defended Israel's right to defend itself, right? Right. In fact, they have a duty to its civilians after Hamas's repeated threats since October the 7th to repeat it to defend so, their so, civilians. So, so is, however, the war, is the however, war in Gaza not self-defence, or is it according to Let me just your, clarify your my position so you yeah, know, right? Yeah. However, I have repeatedly questioned the proportionality of Israel's response, as indeed their greatest allies of But America not the response itself. Now doing. But not the response itself, though. I think they're perfectly entitled to go and take okay, out the Okay, so, so, so may, I, may I continue my question then? I'll yes. You. So since, as I repeat, so since you have justified their response, maybe not how they've carried it out exactly, mm. but you justify their response as self-defence. Their, their right to defend themselves by their, taking their, out the terrorists their right to who committed that atrocity, yes. Okay. Uh, and and uh, presumably you refuse to call Israel, and you have refused when you've been asked to call Israel a terrorist... Uh, organization, government, or the idea for terrorist organization. Well, the difference is here. Are, here we How? Are. Oh, hang I, on. In I, London, no, 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 no. Let me finish my question, please. I, know, I have a question for you. I must clarify. Let me, let me finish my question. You're making some okay, statements okay. that are a bit misleading. Sure. This country considers Hamas to be a prescribed terror group. They do not consider Israel to be a terrorist organization, and nor do I. So that's the position. But, well, but, but I, I'm not I'm asking you. you. The United States. The United States. I'm not asking. I'm not asking. It's important. I'm not asking the British government. I'm asking you, mm. Piers. I don't think right, the British government isn't here. Okay. I do not think they're a terrorist so then let, organization. Now let me no. finish my question. If I can ask the question as well, right, um, for us to discuss. So considering that you have justified the operation uh, that Israel initiated as self-defense, and that you refuse to call Israel. Uh, a, ter uh, a terrorist organization or a terrorist government, despite the fact that um, as many Palestinians, almost as many Palestinians, uh, Gazans have died uh, under Israel's precision bombing, then as, the, as, as Londoners have died during the a whole year of the Blitz under German bombing, which wasn't precision bombing, and yet you still say that, well, Israel isn't a terrorist organization. I think the question we should be asking is, shouldn't you, should you be suspended? Uh, is it responsible to have a person with your views mm. speaking to the public when you clearly refuse to uh, condemn that which needs to be condemned, which okay. was worse than the London Blitz? Per perfectly, Those that perfectly reasonable... With precision weapons, and the Germans didn't even have precision okay. weapons. Perfectly reasonable question. Yes. And you've asked me it yeah. on my show. Yes. The fact you're here and able to ask that, I think, is evidence that I'm prepared to listen to people well, well, who will look me in the eye and ask me difficult questions. Well, you didn't know I was going to say that, but anyway, I'm yes. A, <laughs> that's fine, but that's fine. You're perfectly entitled yeah, to it. Yeah. We believe in uncensored free speech here. Yeah. But let me ask you the question, then, which I asked... You're not answering my question, but you haven't answered it. Well, I have. I said I don't think they're a terrorist organisation. Despite the fact that they've, they've killed almost as many yeah, you've asked me a as, question. as Germans you've did asked me a question. when they bombed London under you, the Blitz for have, one year I have non-precision bombs. I have given you an okay. unequivocal answer. Now, okay. let me ask you if you can give me one. Yes. Do you believe Hamas are a terror organisation? OK, and I'd like to ask you, what, what does no, no, that mean? No, no, just answer my question. Well, I need, I need clarification. Well, this country can, has prescribed I, I them as a terror group. Do you think they are? I, 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 are you the British government? No, I'm asking you to what you. you think. Okay, so I want your clarification. I want a clarification. I gave from you. you a simple, straight okay. answer. What does it mean? No, you tell me. I, I don't know. You're asking me a question. You so ask you the question. You don't think they are a terror group. No, I want, I want your definition of what, 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 do you, what is a terror group? An act that commits acts of terror, a group that commits terror attacks, as and they did on October the So one that commits terror attack, all right, fine. Mm. So define terror. Do you want to ask a question attack. or not? I do, but I, I just want clarification. No, no, we all okay. know what terror please, is. Please, please, no, 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 we're going to go somewhere with this. We're going to go somewhere with this, right? Well, are you going to answer the question? You know, yes, well, yeah. once I get your definition, what's a terror attack? The definition is as is laid down in international law. Which is? committing an act of terror. Which is? Which is terrorism. Are you asking questions you don't know the definition of? Well, why don't you tell me what you think it is? I don't know. You're asking the question. You've no idea what terrorism is. No, I want to, I want your, to answer your I question. I would say massacring 1,200 people on October the 7th in the way Hamas did is an act of terror. Do so, you agree? So, so killing civilians is an act of terror? No, that's not what I said. Oh, so, so then killing civilians is not an act of terror? Committing a massacre on that scale is so, terrorism. Okay. So, so killing right. civilians is not an act of terror? You're not going to answer. Let me bring no, in... I, I want, no, I no, want no, your definition. Important. No, no, I want it, you to be consistent. We have a third guest. No, but I want to I want to say something. I want to say something. All right. You know, really, you know... United States recognize BLO as a terrorist and it negotiates with BLO. Mm. This is one thing. The second, October 7 happened and many things happened after. Are we here just stuck there as a snapshot and to discuss it or we want to discuss what after and what can be done we in do, a better way? That's the most important... I think they're all important issues, but right now, because of what happened in the fallout from last night's show, I specifically want to discuss the definition of... Terrorism, Hamas, 
and whether a British but doctor... Hamas is but you not the Palestinian people. Hang on. But you have, gonna, we have hang a on. definition. I'm going to bring in our I third... Definition. I'm going to bring in Douglas Murray. You're just sitting patiently here. Douglas, uh, first of all, what was your reaction to this interview with a, an NHS doctor last night on this show? Well, let me first of all say that uh, it's, it's necessary to clear quite a lot of things up because we've heard quite a lot of hogwash in the last few minutes. Firstly, uh, your guest last night is a member of an extremist organization, Hezbollah Tahrir, which is banned in many countries, including in European countries. And it's also banned in many Muslim countries. It's banned in Pakistan, it's banned in Egypt, and that's because these Muslim governments recognize that it is an extremist group that has a revolutionary ideology that wants to replace Name government in Muslim countries as, European as well as in... As, do you know... Germany. One European country is banned in um, Douglas Murray. I'm not going to let you lie to the audience like you usually do. I just You're going to justify you. everything just you say on this show, you. Douglas Murray. Right? So I please, I just give me said one country Germany. that... It's not banned I in Germany. I just said It's not banned Germany. in Germany. Germany. You're Check not it. listening. You're Check not it. listening. Uh, You're uh, not to, to, listening. To the audience. Let me, let Google me, it for yourself. You know, His in Germany, really are they banned weird. as an organisation? Is this, is this Mr Al Andalusi? Can I just check? Because I can't see you. It is, Is that him? Yeah. OK. This is a guy, he's of no significance, but he's a guy who I have seen in studios for years spouting extreme Islamist rhetoric. Many years ago, he couldn't condemn the killing of the journalist at Charlie Hebdo. Last year, he wouldn't condemn the attempted murder of condemn. Salman Rushdie. Well, now he can't slander. do this. He if fails this is, every single test. But let slander. me get on to the question. Uh, look, I'm not going Prove to it. engage... Prove, I'm not going to engage in a fun with. fight with this, with this Islamist. Let me answer the question that Piers put to me before you try to interrupt again. Only if you don't lie. Let him right. answer, please. I, I appreciate first that of all, you, let him first answer, much, please. But all right. First of all, I'm not going to keep being talked over by this Islamist blowhard. Let me speak. First of all, your first guest treated us to the first bit of mouthwash this evening by claiming that the word jihad can mean absolutely anything. Nonsense. When a big bearded member of Hizbut Tahir says calls for jihad on the streets of London, then they are not calling for an inner personal struggle with the nature of the divine. They are calling for violence. And anyone who can't recognize that should be questioned about their own motives. Secondly, We've just been treated to a, a monologue about uh, casualty figures in Gaza. Where do these figures come from? I'll tell you where they come from. They come from Hamas. It's quite remarkable this to is me a lie. that two months after the October the 7th massacre, that two months after the October the 7th massacres, the Israelis still don't know the precise number of people murdered on October the 7th. There's a reason for that, because it's it takes time Nations, to work out massacres Ondra, of that scale. The one of the, are striking, one of the striking... You know, I just don't know if either of your guests are going to allow me a word in. Because you are lying, one of the and striking even the numbers of from Israel, from the IDF, no, which are not you, accredited. No. You will, you know, These you know are it's really numbers. interesting hearing somebody who presents, themselves, uh, who presents themselves as a moderate being a spokesperson for Hamas. So let me continue. They are Hamas figures. Douglas. They are all provided by the ministries of Hamas, which is Hamas, which is a prescribed terrorist organization. If you want to reel off Hamas figures, then be my guest. But you are not able to mislead the viewers of Piers' show by quoting Hamas figures at his viewers as if they are holy I am not writ. quoting. Third, it's the Euro we've been men. treated to it's this nonsense. Nations. We've been treated it's the third, international third, community third. organizations. Been, where do you, you think they get the figures eyes. from? Where I do you think you they get the figures from? Thirdly, thirdly, I will continue to speak if it kills you. Thirdly, World War II. It is nonsense that what has been happening in Gaza has, as you said in this endless list of fallacies, that there has been more bombing in Gaza, more deaths and destruction in Gaza than during World War II. Do you no, know anything about almost. World War II? Almost, do you know anything about World War II? I in said, Dresden almost, yeah, yes, alone. I do, Douglas. In Germany. In Dresden do you alone. know anything Germany. about World War II? In Dresden alone, uh, take one well, German city. Take one German city. The destruction was on a scale 
totally dissimilar to what London. you have know in that. Gaza. I'm and taking London. London. I'm very interested. I'm very interested. I am very interested. And I will, once Gaza again, I will finish this point even to if both of these blind right, hearts are trying Douglas to talk over me. No, 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 it's I will finish the point I wanted to make. Okay, I'm going to come back to you both. Let me ask Douglas one question. Douglas, specifically about the doctor. It is very important for your viewers to hear the following definition. The definition of terrorism is the deliberate targeting of innocent civilians. That is what Hamas specializes in. That is what Hamas did and on October And that's what is happening in Gaza now, also. Is what, Israel is, is what Israel is doing terrorism? No, for the yep. following reason. And again, you can lie about this if you want, but do not expect not to be challenged about it. What the IDF is doing is the same manner of war as the British Army, the American Army, and all other armies in the civilized world. They target terrorists like Hamas, and there are civilian casualties. Yes, there are. But it is not the aim of the IDF, any more than it is of the British or American army armies, to target civilians. And anyone who pretends otherwise is lying to the public watching. All right, Douglas, final question before I go back to the two in the studio here. And it's specifically about the doctor that was on last night, whether he should be allowed to continue practicing as a GP when he identifies Hamas as a resistance group wouldn't say that it committed an act of terror, said he didn't even believe that there had been a massacre uh, and was also quite blatantly homophobic, he, he amongst other that. things. Well, he didn't, actually. Um, Douglas... But, but not Douglas, he said not believe. No, 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 let me ask Douglas. Douglas. If. No, Douglas. no, please, please. Let me ask Douglas. Douglas, the, the medical no, no, association... Ask, I'm asking the medical I'll association... Come, I will come both to... I'll the come, medical association will, is the one who is assigned to... Fine. I'm asking Douglas what his view is. Not Douglas. He's not a medical doctor. I'm asking Douglas' opinion. Douglas. Well, you don't seem to be much of an impartial observer of this, I have to say myself. I thought, I thought slightly highly of you before you started ranting as much as Mr. Al Andalusi this evening. Um, uh, I'll tell you what I, what, what I thought of it, Piers. I think our country has had enough of people like your guest last night. It's not just that he's in the NHS. Why is he in Britain? Why do we allow people in Britain to try to overthrow the state who praise terrorism... Members of extremists, what, what has Britain got from this guy exactly? What benefit have we got from him? I mean, I wouldn't want to be an NHS patient going to him. I don't know if any Jews would particularly want to in Britain. I don't know if very many innocent people would want to go to this doctor. But my question is not, is not just should he be able to practice. I want to know why our country of Britain has been such a soft touch for decades that we have Hamas leaders terrorist spokespeople, Islamist sympathisers like your guest, Mr Al-Andalusi, and now NHS doctors who are members of, of, of groups like Hizbut Tahir that stand on the streets of London, call for jihad, call for Muslim armies to arise. I don't think our country benefits anything from these people. I think people like that should leave. We have no need of them. <laughs> what an interesting debate. We can all tell this was really, really eaten. Wow. And based on the facts and the points uh, that they, the, the, they stated, I believe Pierce Morgan was trying to uh, make them to uh, come to an agreement by uh, giving their own opinion on what actually happened October 7th, where uh, the Hamas group, which has been labeled as a terrorist group, came into Israel and massacred a lot of civilians, massacred a lot of children, raped a lot of women, and they also took some people hostage. Pierce Morgan just want to hear their views if they think it's a terrorist act. And believe me, they are all avoiding the question. They couldn't answer the question. Instead of them, you know, giving their answer to the question that uh, Pierce Morgan is asking, they are indirectly trying to beat around the bush by asking Pierce Morgan to define terrorism. Believe me, they know the meaning of terrorism. And I believe uh, Pierce Morgan uh, was trying to know their opinion, know their views on what actually happened October 7th, and they, they, they weren't ready to give any specific answer. Instead, they were beating around the bush. And I'm very glad when Douglas Murray came in, Douglas Murray gave them a vivid explanation, vivid definition of what terrorist, uh, what terrorist, uh, terrorist, uh, terrorist means. And according to Douglas Murray's deliberate act of killing civilians and killing children, which Douglas Murray defined as terrorism. And I believe 
by Douglas Murray definition, we can all tell that what happened October 7th, where a lot of Israel and a lot of Israel children and civilians were massacred, is a terrorist act. And I don't know the problem why this uh, Muslim scholars they find it difficult to uh, uh, come to an agreement. They find it difficult to to hold a discussion without uh, bringing in a lot of confusion. Even answering a question is, uh, has become really very difficult. Just give your view on what you think about uh, the acts that happened October 7th. They couldn't even give their views. Instead, they are asking questions to answer questions, which I feel that is totally absurd, that is totally uncalled for, that is totally unacceptable. It's very, it's very easy, it's very simple. What happened October 7th? Is it a terrorist act? Yes, it's a terrorist act. No, it's, it's, not, it's not a terrorist act. Why are they finding it difficult to answer a yes or no, uh, a yes or no question? Why are they finding it difficult? And he also asked uh, Piers Morgan about Israel. Piers Morgan gave him a good answer that uh, what Israel did, uh, 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 the action Israel are taking is, is they are taking those actions in order to be able to defend their citizen. And same question Piers Morgan is asking him, he couldn't answer the question. And I don't know why uh, uh, it's always like this because I've seen Piers Morgan interview a lot of uh Islam scholar, a lot of Muslim scholar, and they find it difficult to answer questions. Instead of them answering uh, the question uh, they have been asked, they indirectly ask you a question in order to justify the answer they are going to give to your question. I feel that is totally wrong. Answer the goddamn question. It's a yes or no answer. Do you believe what happened in October 7th is, is a terrorist act? Answer the question. If you believe it's yes, say yes. If you believe it's no, say no, so they can go about addressing this issue. I know uh, probably if he would have given, uh, I think the other Muslim scholar is saying that they are not supposed to be talking about what happened in October 7th. They are supposed to be talking about how to address the issue, how to address the conflict between Israel uh, between Israel and Hamas instead of them talking about what happened in October 7th. And I believe to some extent it's right but I still feel that you have to answer the question. What happened in October 7th? Do you believe it's a terrorist act? Give an answer. If it's yes, if it's no, what happened on October 7th? Is it a terrorist act? You should be able to give an answer to that instead of you asking Pierce Morgan a different, a different question. I